Hi all, it's Catherine Burgess with Burgess Group Compass. We're beginning a exploration of how we can be better prepared should catastrophes occur. So this one is about insurance, how to have your insurance ready to go so that hopefully you will be safe no matter what. Enjoy. Hi everybody, it's Catherine Burgess with Burgess Group Compass. We're here today with uh, Greg Neighbor of Neighbor Insurance, and he's going to tell us how we as people who have not necessarily been affected by the recent fire, but have realized our insurance may not be adequate, can um, best be proactive to get our insurance in alignment. So go right ahead, Greg. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks for letting me kind of talk about this with all the events we had in, in Louisville and Lafayette. I want to just take a few minutes to be to kind of give people a roadmap of, of what they can be doing uh, proactively with their insurance policies to not only make sure that they have the coverage they need in place, but also start to better understand, you know, what their policies coverage uh, or, or what they're covering. So the, f the first thing I would do is if you can, uh, either through a paper file or online, is, is get a hold of your declaration page and 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 take a look at that before you reach out to the agent just to kind of find out a little bit of information as far as you know potentially deductibles you have or, or what kind of dwelling coverage so you can a little bit drive the conversation as far as asking some questions about what these these different coverages mean uh, we look at these declaration pages and there's you know these all these letters and numbers and stuff and i think sometimes just taking a few minutes before you call the agent, uh, because we do find out where, uh, you know, sometimes people will call us and what's familiar to us, we, we need to be careful to kind of t not talking over them where we're saying, oh, this is coverage A or this is coverage B. So I'd say first having that declaration page so you can kind of stop us and say, hey, Greg, I, I, what, I don't know what coverage A means, so can you speak to me in more layman's terms? And then the agent will be able to have a copy of that same information you're looking at so they can kind of step you through and start to, to start you to help to understand or, you know, what are the important things I need to key in on? Because with the insurance industry, we've, you know, we, we continue to add coverages or what they consider value added. And what happens is things get cluttered and, and you're looking at this like, why do I have this arson conviction reward coverage? And it's like people become kind of overwhelmed with all this information where these these policies are trying to tell you like, hey, we've got all this great information you, know, you have all these great coverages. When the reality is homeowners need to say, what is it going to cost if my house burns down? How much personal property coverage do I have? What are my liability limits if something happens out there? And as we're finding out with the Marshall Fire, um, what they call additional living expense. If, if I'm forced to move out or my house burns down, how long is the insurance company going to pay? So you sit there and you may have a document in front of you that's you know 20 pages long with, with all these endorsements and coverages, but it really comes down to four to five coverages. And so the first is, you know, talking about what, what the dwelling coverage is and is understanding if in the event of a total loss. And, and that's where I really kind of push people is like, let's let's concentrate on what things are going to cost from a total loss standpoint as far as um, if, if I lose my house, just give me a number. Is it going to be a million? Is it going to be 750? What's going to be the cost on that? Because Again, we'll get into all these steps of saying, well, if you add this coverage plus you take this away, um, you, you start to lose people. So my advice to people is like, let's just cut to the number at the end. What's it, what's available to me as far as if my house burns down? Secondly is what kind of coverage do I have? Do I have replacement costs? Um, which means the insurance company is responsible for replacing your house with one of like kind and quality. And that's a great coverage, but it comes with a limit to say, we'll pay replacement costs, but up to what the policy limit states. So people need to be careful where this term gets thrown around. They're like, well, oh, I'm in good shape. I have replacement costs. We'll be careful 
there, there's a limit on that. So replacement cost is a great coverage because yes, you're going to get the value for what it costs today, but there's a limit there. The next step up, which a lot of carriers are starting to offer is guaranteed replacement cost, And this is one that a lot of people are talking about. And, and it is an, it's an outstanding coverage where that says, if I have a loss, regardless of what is stated on my declaration page, if it says I have 500,000 in building coverage, if I pay and you pay additional for this guaranteed replacement cost, I will actually get what it costs to replace my house. So if it's gonna cost 650,000, um, guaranteed replacement cost is hard to get given the location of your home, the size of your home, age of construction. The insurance companies are very particular about where they get, you know, where they're going to offer this coverage. So I would, I would ask people to say, you know, the first coverage is, do I have replacement costs? Because you don't want to be paid a depreciated amount on your house that may be 15 years old, but kind of the gold standard or, 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 or one you want to try to see if you can get is guaranteed replacement costs. Because again, then you kind of push some of that responsibility back on the insurance company to say, Hey, you guys, underwrite this, you tell us what you think your, your, your house is to rebuild. But at the end of the day, I, I, I am paying, you know, an additional premium for that safety net, which to me is what insurance is about. That's, that's the check you don't want to write. Like it, it's, it's not a time to be, to be kind of, uh, you know, cheap about things. It's like, and right. one way I tell people to offset that is, Okay, if, if this guaranteed replacement cost is going to cost you an extra, you know, three hundred, four hundred dollars a year, maybe we look at taking a higher deductible. If your game is to try to, you know, keep that premium in a range, let let's see what the give and take is. So to me, on the dwelling coverage is make sure you got replacement costs. That's a great starting spot. But ask if 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 you can get guaranteed replacement costs, and then again, as you start to increase coverages. Look if there's an option in there with your deductible to take on a, a larger deductible, which is of course meaning you're taking on more responsibility. But insurance, again, you should be looking at the bigger picture of like whether I have a $1,500 or a $2,500 deductible, that's not a game changer for you. Right. If you're underinsured by a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. that's a bad day. And so I think again, that, you know, taking this in small bites. So the first is on that building, seeing what options are available if you're, if you can get the guaranteed replacement cost, and then again, offset it with, with, with the deductible is a great way to go. Let's say, Greg, that uh, the insurance company says, sorry, you're not in a location where we can offer guaranteed replacement cost. Mm -hmm. Given the type of appreciation that we see in the, you know, front range markets, would you recommend that people are updating their guaranteed replacement or their replacement cost every six months or once a year? Or how, how can people stay best ahead of that? I would do it once a year. Um, I think every six months, I know this is a unique market where the materials and labor have been so dynamic, but if you're adjusting things on an annual basis, I think you're, you're, you're in a good spot. And in another way, you know, if you can't get the guaranteed replacement cost, um, there's also what they call an extended replacement cost, which is a, uh, it could be 25%, it could be 50%. So that's another way of where, you know, we put guaranteed replacement costs at the top of the list. But a second way to kind of give you some wiggle room is, you know, I've got my house insured for 500,000. What would it be if I added extended replacement cost of 25% or 50%? Again, that way you're not chasing this every six months. It, it gives you, because that, that, that extended replacement cost says, if we have your house insured for 50, for 500,000 and you have a 50% extended replacement cost, you have an additional 250,000 for a total of 750,000. So again, that helps and it's the most cost effective way to get that additional coverage. So to me is try to get guaranteed replacement cost. If not, 
what options of extended replacement cost do I have? Can I get 50%? Can I get 25%? And again, start to get some numbers and, and then you can decide kind of where that point of diminishing return is. Right. Okay. Any other kind of words of wisdom for the people who are trying to get their insurance house in order? Yeah, I think the next one would be is, is, is personal property. Um, the, I think the best thing to do is walk through the house with a video with your phone or take some pictures. You know, people are always like, you know, should I keep receipts and documentation? It's like the best thing you can do is is take some pictures or a video walking through room by room. And, and I think video is nice because you can kind of give some audio as far as what, what's going on. Because you can walk through, and I think most people imagine if you have a one or two car garage at your house, you you have no idea that you know the tools and the other stuff that's in there. So by having a video or some you know uh, some pictures of what's going on, you're able to go through. Because if you do have a catastrophic loss, you know the insurance company can require you to go through and list out those individual items. And what I find by having you know, like a video journal or some pictures, you're able to go through jog your memory. But also if it ever became a question of, you know, the insurance company's like, well, we're not sure that you had this floor jack that you claimed in your garage that you say is worth, you know, $3,000, you, you have a picture. So on right. anything that are unique items or high value items, because the other thing is when you have a loss, you need to go out and establish what is it going to cost to replace these items with like kind and quality. So it serves two purposes. It allows the insurance company, it takes the emotion out of you and the adjuster potentially debating or digging for this coverage. You've got these, you know, take this video, take these pictures, upload it on the cloud. And that way, you know, you can say, well, well, here's a picture of, of the item in my living room or my garage. Because what we find is, you know, whether it's a water loss that's in your house or a fire, the contents portion of your claim is not only emotionally, but time-wise to inventory, it's just extraordinary. I mean, imagine going through your living room and, and trying to say, you know, I, I gotta put all the items there. If you have the video, what, we've, what I found from past claims is, just from an emotional standpoint, it kind of compartmentalizes things where you can get up and you go, okay, I'm going to work on the living room and the stuff that's in there. Otherwise, you're waking up at two in the morning and you're like, oh, that's right. We had those end tables and it's just emotionally exhausting. So you're going to cover your bases from the standpoint of being able to document ownership of these items. You're going to help yourself from inventorying these. And I think you're also going to help build this roadmap of like, how can I go through kind of room by room? So on the personal property, take some pictures, take some videos, upload them to the cloud, put them on a thumb drive, put them somewhere where they're off premise. And if something happens, uh, you're gonna find it extremely beneficial. And you're gonna make sure you claim everything you have because you're gonna miss a lot of the, the small incidental stuff. And that starts to add up, add up to, you know, hundreds if not thousands of dollars. For sure. And so would you recommend even opening the drawers and uh, cabinets and so on, just so that you, you capture all of that? Absolutely. In your video? Yeah, yeah, all that. Because you imagine you're in your kitchen and you've got all these, I mean, again, the insurance company has the right to say, okay, Catherine, we need to know how many spatulas you had, how many egg beaters, and again, you can go through and, and, and be able to kind of inventory that. So yeah, as silly as it sounds, thankful, you know, with cell phones and stuff, it's, it's very convenient for us to go through and, um, and get those. So yeah, go through and especially basements, garages, sheds, where we seem to put a bunch of stuff. I mean, you forget, you know, you know, all the stuff, you know, tools and equipment you have out there. And again, you know, these things, thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to so go through. And again, just have a narrative, you know, not only take a, a picture of the artwork that you may have in your house or an antique piece of furniture, because then you can take it down to the 
you know, whoever's going to appraise the piece of art, you can say, here's this piece that was 36 inches wide. It was an oil piece on a canvas. It does two things. It, it makes sure, you know, the adjuster, you can show the adjuster that you had it, but also um, the person appraising it can give you a fair value on that. Right. Got it. Okay. So maybe doing that at the same time that we update our insurance yearly, we re-video our properties and uh, upload those to the clouds yearly just to keep keep everything as up to date as possible. Absolutely. It's become so convenient with our phone. So, you know, spend 20 minutes, 15 minutes walking to your house. And it, 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 if there's one thing again on these large losses, the contents inventory, it's just, it's so hard on people. Cause you imagine when you're dealing with your structure, you know, you have the benefit of the builder, the architect that you get to work with to kind of lean on. Whereas with the contents, I mean, you're sitting at your kitchen table or the kitchen table at the house you're renting and you're trying to go through that. And again, to be able to set some kind of guardrails on when you start to work on it and how to go through, like to be able to go through the room top to bottom, I've just found it, you know, having done this now for 30 years and dealt with a lot of total losses, right. that is just, it just wears on people. And so anything we can do to kind of take it in smaller bites, because then people just get overwhelmed and they don't deal with it. So again, having, having, you know, the information to kind of force yourself to go through and, you know, a structured way, I, I think it just helps them uh, immensely. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, one of our dear ones did lose lose everything, you know, and she lived on Marshall and she just trying to remember what was in her office. Um, the She went to the SBA to get a, a loan and um, they were saying, well, what what do you need replace it, replaced? And just even putting together that list, as you were saying, is is incredibly taxing. So. It, it's it just it's. It just kind of is a paralysis. I mean, it just paralyzes you. And so, yeah, in that case, you know, she could sit down, run the pictures, or again, I think video with an audio. And you're right. It just, it just, it just is such a huge weight. But yeah, I would say most people today, if you said, can you tell me what's in your office? And you kind of wrote down and then you went back. You just be shocked at the yeah. the things you take for granted, or you remember at two in the morning, you're like, "Oh, I had an electric staple, or I had a hole punch." And so, right. so yeah, that's 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 exactly what we're trying to when you're going through this catastrophic type of situation, just take one less thing off their plate where you've got a little bit of structure to, to how you're going to approach this. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, cool. Well, um, thank you so much, Greg. We really appreciate your, your thoughts. And uh, as we head down this road further, I'm sure more insurance questions will come up. So we uh, will feature your info here and I hope people will uh, feel free to give you a jingle at Neighbor Insurance in Boulder. And um, we will be talking to you again, I'm sure. So Thanks, thank Catherine. you so Good much. Good chatting with you. Yep. Okay, take care.